speaker today is uh, Lorenzo Panzeri. Lorenzo is a PhD from the Environmental Infrastructure Engineering Program, but he's, he's doing his PhD uh, between the DECA department and also the Department of Math. So here he is working under the supervision of professors uh, Dongoni and Papini, and from the math department he is working uh, with Professor Fumagalli and Formaggio. So uh, uh, his research tackles the development of strategies for uh, monitoring uh, urban landfills. And without further ado from my side, I will just simply leave the floor to Lorenzo and wish you a great PhD talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chiara. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'll, I will explain a little bit what I'm doing in my research topic, which is we are trying to develop a mixed dimensional model for the analysis of condition of liner landfills. As a starting point, okay. As a starting point, okay. Moving, okay. As a starting point, this is more or less the outline that I will follow during this speech. So I will start explaining about what are the municipal solid waste landfills. In the second part, I will explain something about the monitoring approach that we would like to consider to analyze this liner. During the uh, analysis of the monitoring approach, we will analyze in detail the geophysical uh, approach, in particular the one related uh, to the electrical resistive tomography. And linked to this, we are going to see together the mixed dimensional uh, mathematical model that we are developing together with the Department of Mathematics. In the second part, I will show you something about the validation of this approach. So tests that we have used in uh, lab, so experiments, comparison with analytical solution, and also sensitivity analysis just to understand if our approach is able for example, to assess um, the condition of the liner in landfill. As a starting point, what are the municipal solid waste landfills? Are area in which uh, um, which receive household waste. Basically, they receive all type of waste that are known as hazardous and that cannot be recycled. So we can consider in these waste, for example, commercial solid waste and industrial solid waste. There are several restrictions from the point of view of the location, for example. We, for sure, we cannot locate this uh, infrastructure in the two plains close to faults, so geological restriction. And we have mandatory uh, monitoring tools to be considered. For example, we have to consider the presence of wells or pipes for example, to analyze the, the fusion of uh, leachate, the polluted leachate coming from the waste. And uh, in the same way, uh, we are focusing mainly on that. We have to consider the presence of an artificial liner, thin liner, which is as the goal to um, hamper the diffusion of the leachate, kill the weed. Uh, from the regulation point of view, we have different kind of regulation that are different at international, national, regional level. I will start from the USA ones that defines with seven points more or less the um, requirements for the monitoring of uh, landfills. Um, there are again local restrictions, as I mentioned before. We have, for example, the mandatory presence of some um, natural liner of clay, for example, to, uh, let's say, to slow the diffusion of the, the, the leaches. We have the presence of liner, so plastic liner that can hamper the diffusion. And very interesting and important things to, to take into account is about uh, the monitoring of the ground, groundwater, but also the continuous monitoring of landfill even after the closure. So they define, for example, a monitoring till 30 years after the closure. At the European level, we are pulling more or less the same points. 
we are defining the presence of artificial liner where we are not able to maintain a suitable condition in terms of uh, uh, permeability uh, due by the presence of the uh, geological strata, for example. And at the national level, we have parameters that have to be maintained, considering natural or artificial liner, for example. And these parameters are related to the hydraulic conductivity and the frequencies of the liquids. So the main three points to be considered are listed. So hydraulic conductivity, layer thickness, and the presence of the liner. We want to analyze the condition of this liner. But this is very difficult because uh, during the life of the uh, landfills, we had this liner covered by the waste mass. How can we assess the condition of this um, liner? We explore the potential of non-invasive method. So we consider ERP method. But in a very simple way, what we are doing with uh, this kind of approach is to inject current inside the soil from two electrodes, stainless steel electrodes, and we are measuring the difference in potential. In this way, as you can see from the video on the right side, we can create with current these liquid potential curves that are, um, are alterated by the presence of conductive and uh, resistive material. Basically, we are measuring the resistivity, so the opposite of conductivity. It's very useful in this case, why? It's very useful because we have the liner, which is plastic, so a material which is highly, highly resistant. In the same way, we have the uh, polluting liquid, which is highly conductive because it's rich in salt. So we can notice in a very important way this difference. And uh, speaking about the um, acquisition, we have not just four electrodes injecting current, but we have a series of electrodes that as they aim to cover all the landfills. So we have this uh, disposition of the electrode that can increase also the distance between them in order to reach um, um, deeper points. Okay, so to reach point in which we suppose the presence of the land. This is what we did in lab. So we did some downscale tests. So we reduced the dimension of stainless steel electrodes till the dimension of a screw of around 1.5 centimeter and what we obtain is this image that gives us information about what is happening inside the soil. The blue color represents the highly conductive area while the red one are the highly resistive. In this case we are in a different case with respect to the lenses. We are analyzing a lens light. So this is water and the small red point is represented by the presence of oil, so highly resistant. What we are doing now is to exploit this uh, approach to the analysis of the condition of liner in lentils. Uh, at this point, I, I am going to do a small excursus about why, um, where we started. We started from the analysis of lens light with this method, locating the electrodes along the line on the surface. And what uh, we have seen from the video and also from the results of the electrical resistivity tomography is the crazy movements of water inside the soil. In this case, we decide to consider, for example, a drain located in an upper part, which provides continuously water. In this way, we, are, um, we can see what is happening inside, even though, for example, the collapse is not already happening. Coming back to the landfills, this is in general the point we are dealing with. So the final goal is to have an image of the uh, subsoil. The starting point is the acquisition. And our model is the one creating the synthetic data. At this point, we can compare the synthetic data developed with our mixed dimensional model that I will explain in the next slide, and the pseudo sectional team from the analysis institute. At this point, we can compare them, and if we have convergence, we can end and obtain the final model. 
this is how more or less the forward and invert problem works in the physics. Okay. Okay, the starting point is the approach, the electrical sensitivity to mark the approach. And the second tool is the numerical model to solve our problem model. So this is a mixed dimensional model written in Python together with the Department of Mathematics. And the particularity is that we are considering elements that are 3D, 2D, and 1D together. More in detail, mathematically speaking, we are considering 3D elements as the titrate and the mesh. 2D, the 2D element C is the liner. We consider the liner as a 2D element just because the thickness of the liner is around 3-4 millimeters. With respect to the aerial extension of the length, that could be around 500 meters, multiply for 500 meters. So is, uh, let's say, very important to consider that is very, very small thickness with respect to the distribution dimension. And the 1D element are the and everything works with uh, this uh, equation that consider, for example, some boundary condition at the electrodes where we have the injection of current, for example, and where we have the measuring of the tension. Then everything works from the flux point of view of the current if we look at interface condition. So we have a sort of mortar grid that allow the three D elements speak with the 2D, and so the, uh, let's say, movement of the flow of the current through the 3D and 2D elements, in the same way from the 1D to the 3D. At this point, I will explain um, our goals and objectives when we start to analyze the functionality of this model. So at the beginning, we start to analyze the validation evaluation of this model. Then one other interesting goal was uh, assessment of the ability of the, this approach to understand the condition of the liner, even though the liner is very at a very high depth. Okay, so for example, if we have alteration in the middle of the lenses, we, are we able to to understand if we if uh, we have an alteration in this area? And the third point is about uh, the reduction uh, acquisition time field, which is very important when we are doing. To we are going to do this analysis. Everything is uh, the validation. We will do the validation through uh, comparison with lab experiments, uh, other softwares, comparison with other software, and analytical solution present in literature. Then we will do a sensitivity analysis to understand if we are able to understand if, uh, if you are able to understand if there is a presence, for example, in, uh, in the center of the lamp fields of a wall. And then we will uh, use and develop an algorithm for the selection of the most suitable configuration. I will explain this later. The starting point is the comparison of the results obtained through experiment. In this case, we have two settings. And the results obtained through literature, so through analytical solution present in literature. And then the comparison with other commercial software, as for example, working in Python. These are the two settings. This is the first one. We have a plastic box. We located the electrode on the surface and increased the amount of water inside the box. We increased the distance from the surface of the base of the box. The base of the box is compared to the, the uh, liner, so plastic. And uh, in the second one, in the second setting, we located one box inside a, a bigger box. In this way, we're simulating the presence of the lamp field. So we made a hole in a known position, and we try to understand if with different settings of electrodes, are we able to, uh, for example, assess the, the presence of this hole. In, this is a representation of the results of the setting one and setting two. From setting one, we can notice that these are the flux of the current is highly alterated hampered by the presence of the highly resistant liner. So we have null values of different potential here. 
why we have what is the negative values here. So in this sense, we can assess the location of the line. In the second setting, we have the flux of current that tends to pass through the hole. And we have an high difference between the inside part and the outside part. Looking at the setting one, these are the results in terms of values at different depth, at different depth. And uh, these are the values of the resistivity measure. What we can notice is that the theoretical values of the results obtained through analytical solution, the results obtained through our model, and the one obtained from other uh, models that are uh, available, in, uh, for example, online, are matching. And so from this point, we are like, satisfied. We have two curves just because we consider different setting of the electrodes. In this case, we have distances that are three centimeter between the electrodes. And in this case, we consider six centimeter of distance. This is a uh, focus on the second typology of analysis. And again, from this graph, from this uh, histogram, the red, the red values is the one obtained in lab. And the blue one are a series of values obtained from the model, considering also the errors that we, uh, consider errors in the location of the electron in lab, for example. And what we can see is that the values fall inside the, the spinous values. Graphically, what, is, what happened is the same as explained before. In this case, of course, we have the location that are just moving inside the box. So we are not the presence of the flow passing through the hole. In the same way, if we look at the different potentials, so outside, in this case, it's zero because the flux is not passing outside. While in this case, we have high difference. I mentioned also the analytical solution. So we compare also the result of our model with this analytical solution that represents a, a conductive sphere immersed in a, in, a, in a medium. And this conductive sphere can be compared to the presence of something that is highly conductive, as for example, the lichen. We compare the results with different distance of the sphere from the surface, and we notice that they match the solution proposed by Aldrich and Oldenburg. This is the second step that we consider from the sphere. Another important point comes from the comparison with other models that are present uh, online. For example, we have Pygim. And what we notice, simulating with different length of the mesh, characteristic, characteristic length of the mesh, we obtain uh, a number of elements with five times less with respect to the other model. This is why we are considering the mixed dimensional model. So we are using the linear as a 2D element instead of a 3D. This is very useful when we are dealing with the inversion problem. So when we are solving this mathematical problem, we are considering much less number of elements, so less unknown. From the sensitivity point of view, is the of what I explained before about if we have holes in the middle, are we able to one to let's say to see to see? Um, sensitivity is just, for example, how sensible is. Uh, a point to a variation of resistivity. So we can clearly see these points, I would say in this way. And for this reason, we did some tests doing, let's say, synthetic model. This is the land fields, and this is where the electro electrodes are located <laughs> in case A. In case B, we located also an electrode inside the land fields. At this point, we cut some slices at different depth below the land field just to see how sensitivity is going. And what we can see graphically is that we increase a lot the sensitivity in case B where respect is up. This is, sorry. These are the values that we have a different depth. I like the ones which is closer to the, to the liner. And we did also a plot over line along Z in the middle of the lenses. And we noticed that in the second case, so case B, we have a uh, peak of sensitivity at five centimeters and in the area below uh, the location of the liner, which is located at five centimeters. 
So we are very interested in these results just because we can have an, um, a clear view of the area where we have the liner and in the area where we could have, for example, the leaches, so close to the, the liner, close to the hole in the liner. Another point that I didn't mention before is that to do this sort of analysis on field, we need to consider more than four electrodes. We need to cover all the lenses, for example. So there are several array configurations, so order of um, electrodes that allow us to understand the, the behavior of the chlorine substrate. And if we consider, for example, the number of possible configuration, we have this formula. So n is the number of the electrodes we, that we are considering. If we consider, for example, 48 electrodes, this is a normal analysis, analysis done in field, we will have this number of configuration, which is super high. So we have a better coverage in terms of sensitivity, we respect, for example, to consider just an alpha configuration with a technology of array, but it will take much more time. So, what to do at this point? At this point, we have to consider one thing. Different arrays have different, as different signal to noise ratio and also different depth of investigation, which is something we, that is very interesting for us. And at this point, we decide to consider some algorithm just to select the best configuration to be used in in, in this case, we uh, consider the, the approach proposed by Timberdani et al. So we consider the area, the parameter represents the elements of the mesh. We consider the parameter with the which has the lowest sensitivity, and we take the area, the area values with respect to the configuration. So in this sense, we are like to give much more importance to the area which are, have low sensitivity. In this case, we are able to, let's say, calibrate in an interesting way the number of configuration to be used. We rank them, and we decide to use, for example, the force 1000. This is or less the results, if we consider the present group over, over here. This is the global, considering 24 electrodes. This is the results obtained with an alpha, so 84 electrodes. And this is the consideration of the best configuration selected with the algorithm. So we have an eye cover of all the area below the lenses. So concluding, um, I would say that these methods are commonly used in literature and uh, are able to give us interesting information about the condition of liner and the monitoring of municipal solid waste lenses. Um, I, I, we noticed during the experiment that we can assess the presence of holes in the liner with particular ad hoc configuration, and uh, our mixed dimensional model obtained results that are comparable, very close to the one obtained by other uh, softwares and uh, by testers. Um, moreover, we can reduce in a very important way the number of unknowns, so the time to do the follow-up problem and the inverse problem. Um, from the point of view of the sensitivity, we notice uh, very important improvements when we insert an electrode inside the lenses with respect to the condition where we have everything outside. And we consider also a block algorithm for the reduction of the time to be spent in on field to, to acquire the information. This is, these are some works that we have published about this topic, going from sensitivity to uh, the mixed dimensional model. And ongoing works are related to the test with heterogeneous material inside the lenses. This is a common case. And uh, for example, the assessment of multiple holes, which is not so easy to be assessed. And in the second phase, we will, in, in, uh, we will integrate the, the determin uh, deterministic and the probabilistic approach. The final goal is the test of this model on a real scale case. Thank you very much.